So I'm out here at the river today. I'm gonna try to catch some crayfish. And things are looking pretty good. It's late in the season, so I'm not anticipating a whole lot, but the water looks really nice and clear. And there's a little pile of brush over there. I think we'll go put a trap in. I'll show you how I do it. All right, so these are the traps I use. I actually have 10 of these. I've got five of them here with me today. I really like these traps. First of all, they're not made in China. That's a plus. I think they're made in Sweden. Second of all, they have these pretty big holes, which actually I think is an advantage because the smaller crayfish can just fall right out. You don't have to sort them. They also have this metal bar fixed to the bottom and that helps them sit upright underwater. So those are three things I like about the traps. One more thing while I'm thinking about it, I use camouflage line to tie my traps. Black would be fine too. I don't like to use bright yellow or orange or even white because it lets other people see where your traps are. I like to keep these things as hidden as possible. So um, that's why I use camouflage line. Okay, so what do you use for bait? I use cat food. This is just canned cat food. It's cheap. It's really easy to carry around with you when you're out catching crayfish because it doesn't, it doesn't leak as long as it's sealed up. Um, it's really convenient. It's pretty cheap. I know some people use tuna, but that's expensive and I'd just as soon eat the tuna and not, not waste it that way. So what I do is take a piece of, this is just a piece of old wire from a light fixture I took down. I just saved it and I can reuse this. I just stick it under the tab like that. And what I'll do is after we poke holes in this, I'll use this to suspend it for in the center of the trap. That way this will hang right down in the very middle of the trap so the crayfish have to get in there to get to it. Um, that's a mistake I see a lot. People just take a can and throw it in there. The can will go to the side where the crayfish will just hang on the outside and try to get it. So we want to try to get this can suspended in the middle. Now as far as poking holes in this, some people use a hammer and a nail. I think that's kind of cumbersome. I just use this and it's tied onto my vest for probably obvious reasons. But just a regular old can opener. And what I do is I go around and just poke a few holes like this. Takes us just a second and we're all set. So the last thing to do is to open this trap up, hang it right here. I'll do that now. I'll show you what it looks like. And we're all set. So this trap is ready to be put in the water. I see a few fish going by. Let's hope some crayfish find it too. Okay, all the traps are in. And notice that that camouflage line really blends in well. I don't even know if you can really see it in the video, but like I said, if you had bright yellow or bright orange, even white would be pretty obvious, but I think we're all set. I smell a little bit like cat food, which is a little worrisome given the mountain lion reports I've seen lately, but I think it'll be okay. See any crayfish yet? That's where I put my last trap, right there. Just barely see it. All right, I'm gonna go take a break. I'm gonna let these traps soak for about, I'm gonna let these traps soak for about an hour. In a lake, you might leave them a little bit longer, but in the stream, I think an hour is gonna be perfect. So I'm back at the spot where I put in the first trap. It's been about an hour. And you can see there's a big old male crayfish right on top. Nice big claws. So what that tells me is I guess I need to be a little more patient. Hope he can find his way into the trap. Because he's a nice one. See another crayfish coming into the trap right now. So it's a little slower today, but that's a really good sign. We just got to be patient. Okay, I think that big male made it in. I think we're going to pull this trap and find out. Let's try and see. Oh, he did. Boy, he's a monster too. Only three, four crayfish in there, but 
Look at the size of some of these guys. Look at this one. He's got some monster claws. I'll try to give you a better view in a second. There he is. Okay, not a lot of crayfish. I mean, a good day this trap would be half full, but you know what? To get these big, big males like this, these nice big claws, I'll take it. <laughs> this is a really nice crayfish, and he can reach surprisingly far back with those claws, so I'm not going to overdo it, but I'll check that out. That's a really, really nice big male signal crayfish. Okay, into the bucket he goes. And this is a start. We're going to see how we do today. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. I don't know if there's any monsters in there, but that's a nice mess of crayfish. Guessing about 15, 20 crayfish in there, maybe. Awesome. Okay, second trap at this location. And it's pretty deep here. It's probably, well, I mean, for a stream. I'm maybe three, four feet down with this trap. Nice clear water. Okay, enough talk. Let's pull it up and see what we got. Yeah, pretty good haul. A couple little ones, I think I'll try to get those out. Either that or they'll climb right out. Like, see this guy right here? He's about able to climb out by himself. Same with that one there. His tail's sticking out. So we'll let those go. Let them go back and get a little bit bigger. But I'd say we got another dozen or so with this trap. That's great. All right, I'll dump them in the bucket and we'll keep going. Okay, next traps. Maybe pull both these at the same time, let you get a look. Okay. Not bad. Not too bad. Okay, cool. Set this one down. I'm going to try to set this one down, grab the next one to show you. Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to dump this one out first because I'm worried these guys are going to climb out. Okay, next trap. And, sorry it's hard to hold the camera and do it at the same time. Not many, but that one is huge. That is a nice crayfish, look at that guy. And that's a male. Females just don't get that big, that's a male too. As a matter of fact, all three of these are. But that's a nice big, big crayfish. Whoops, sorry about the camera work here. Yeah, look at that. It's a monster, at least by my standards. Whoops. Sorry, it's really hard to do this and hold the camera. Well, we're not exactly ending on a high note. Two little guys, and by guys I mean, oh no, there's one, I didn't even see him, so three. Just goes to show, it's hard to tell, I mean these traps were only a few yards from each other, and a couple of them had probably upwards of 15, 20, and this one, three, but we'll take them, gonna throw them in the bucket, and clean up and go home. Okay, I'm gonna show you just how easy the cleanup is and how there are no excuses for leaving this kind of thing in the water. So, taking this off the trap, 
A lot of the cat food oils have leaked out, but there's still a lot of material in there. So just pop off the top. Being real careful, that's quite sharp, obviously. This, I don't eat to the crayfish I didn't catch. I usually give it a good rinse. And put it together. There we go. It's already a big male crayfish attacking <laughs> the bait I put back in. It's nice to see some still in the stream, so that's cool. Okay, it's been a great day. This part of the stream has been really productive. I'll get a final count later and let you know what I got, but before I finish up, a couple last things. First of all, be sure you know the rules for the area you're in before you head out. Here we actually have a limit on crayfish, and these are native crayfish I'm catching, so they do that to preserve the resource. Other places, crayfish are invasive and they want you to take as many as you can, so uh, make sure you know the law before you head out. Second of all, please, please clean up after yourself. Um, it's nice to just leave the stream looking beautiful like it was before we got here today. All right, so here's the final result from today. 72 crayfish, and some are pretty nice size. There's a couple more things I'll show you real quickly. First of all, notice the color on this one. This is a big male. Um, he's a lot brighter red, and his shell is a little bit thinner, and that just means he's molted more recently. Here's another big male, but he's been in this shell for a little bit longer. The other thing I think is interesting is knowing the difference between a male and a female crayfish. Um, in some cases you can just tell. I mean, the, this one is obviously a male, the claws are so big. But it's interesting to be able to know for sure. Plus it gives me a flimsy pretext to show you my cool new knife. So anyway, if you flip it over and look, and I'll just use this as a pointer, this male has these little swimming legs back here on his tail, and the first couple towards the front of the crayfish are very thick. You can tell these are really thick, heavy legs. If you look at a female, for example, here's one in the end, and you see they're a little darker, but all these legs are really thin. They're all kind of the same uniform thickness. So that's one way to know for sure. But you can also tell the females are a little bit smaller. They're a little bit wider on the shell. Um, you get so you can just tell without having to look. But it's always nice to be able to tell just what you have. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. By the way, this is my first foray into YouTube, so if you like this, you want to see me post some more things about cool outdoor stuff to do in the Pacific Northwest, let me know. Um, I'll kind of go with this idea or not based on the feedback I get, so love to hear from you. Or maybe you just want to tell me everything I did wrong, that's fine too. Alright, thanks again for watching and take care.